friends, this is Caitlin, and today I'm sharing with you a card that I made for the Lawn Fawn and Lawn Fanatics Summertime Fun Card Challenge. These challenges are super inspiring to me, and they really help me to get creating when I feel otherwise in a little bit of a rut. So today I'm going to be using the All the Dots paper pad, and I'm going to be using the Henry's ABCs. Uh, as well as the Berry Special and the Bubbles of Joy stamp sets for those adorable mice. And then I have the Strawberry and Lemon dies. So if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button for me. We are so close to the 900 subscriber mark and I bring out new videos every Friday sharing with you some crafty inspiration. So I am going to be playing today with a brand new item that Uncharted Mariner uh, color from the Tim Tim Holtz and Ranger collection. I, I got these in the mail the day that I filmed this and immediately was like, we have to use it. So I'm spraying down a piece of Distress watercolor paper with just some plain clean water out of my little travel spray bottle. And then I'm going in with the spray stain um, in the Uncharted Mariner color. And you can see I'm just kind of going back and forth between my water and my spray stain. And I am going to be blotting with a paper towel. And you can also see that you have to be careful when you're using a paper towel to do this because the print of the paper towel will show up in the ink when you're blotting it up. So I know Tim recommends using like one that's super plain. I'm pretty sure Amy R uses like bamboo ones that don't really have a print. I found that if I just kind of pat in little areas, I get a little bit of a better effect. So once I was happy with my splatters, I set that aside to dry and I am stamping out three of these cute mice. So I have the one in the overalls from the Berry Special and my other two are from the Bubbles of Joy. And I'm going to be stamping them in my favorite alcohol ink friendly ink, which is my Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. That is my go-to. And I'm going to be working on Copic Express It paper for all of the images and die cuts that I'm using today because I am going to be Copic coloring my die cuts today instead of ink blending, which is usually how I do them. Because I'm going to be using different die sets together, I wanted to try to keep the scale as not necessarily realistic, but a little more believable if possible. So I'm only going to be using the smaller of the two strawberries from those strawberry dies. Um, so I'm going to be cutting that out twice and as well as this little lemon wedge and the back circle. And then on a bigger piece, I'm cutting out two full lemons and another strawberry and then leaves to go with everything. So to make things easier on myself, I am using my kind of negative spaces um, from my die cutting as a template to hold on my pieces in place while I do my coloring. So I just have my paper flipped over and I'm adding some washi tape to the back and you can see I'm just going to pop in all of my die cut pieces kind of like just filling in a little puzzle and the washi tape is going to hold it in place so that I don't have to worry about my fingers being in the way especially because some of these die cuts have some pretty detailed elements to them and it just helps me also to not lose anything to be <laughs> to be super honest with you unfortunately that is always a concern on this uh, craft desk of mine so I'm starting by coloring in my sweet little mice I'm going in to color my overalls first as always, I will have all of the Copic marker colors that I'm using down in that description box below for you. I just kept the coloring really simple on these guys. I used the same color family and just kind of changed up who got more of the darker versus the medium versus the light markers as I went across. So they're all unique, but they also all kind of look like they could, might have come from the same mousy family. Uh, I'm keeping all of my shadows pretty simple and kind of on the bottom, especially for this guy that's going to be laying down. I'm going to put him on top of a lemon like he's just stuck up there rolling around. Um, and I definitely kept him on the lighter side and I, when I color in my lice, my mice really lightly, I like to add a little bit of dot detail on their little bums. I just think it's so cute and almost looks like little freckles or something and just adds a little bit of extra interest to an area that doesn't really have a lot of detail. 
So I'm coloring in my third mouse now, kind of more in those medium tones of that warm gray, going in to give everybody dark noses and rosy ears and rosy cheeks. I just love this color combination for my mice and for my lawn fun mice. I use it quite a bit, those warm gray markers. Now I'm going in with a white gel pen to add highlights to their little cheeks and their eyes. And then I skipped over coloring this first strawberry because the order I went in was really weird, but I'll share with you the second strawberry in full detail, so don't worry. Um, I colored in my leaves really simply with a little three color blend, just kind of going over the stitch lines that are created by the dye. And then for this lemon slice, I colored in the full lemon just around the edges where you're going to see it peeking out from under the wedge detail with the darkest marker. And now I'm going in to kind of just give some more detail to the wedges and those little pips inside the lemon and just kind of blending everything out. I did that same kind of general coloring really roughly on the back parts of the lemons because the only part you're really going to see is inside those die cut dots. So then for my upper piece, I added in my shadow to the bottom and then a little bit under the top. And then I'm just going in with my lighter markers and you can see I am not being super careful with these. I think that especially for the lemons when they have that bumpy texture, you don't have to go crazy with your color blends. Um, if it brings you joy and you have the time for it, by all means go for it. But I just felt with my splattery background and how kind of fun and whimsical I wanted this card to feel to convey that summertime fun, um, that kind of a rougher color was good for this, this kind of card that I was creating. So now I'm going in to do that last strawberry in full detail for you. I use the same color greens for all of my leaves and my strawberry tops. I colored the edges of my under part red, but I, you don't really see them in the finished product and I wasn't keeping that in mind. So I colored from the darkest up to the lightest on my strawberry and now it was time to start stacking all of my elements. So I'm just using some precision glue and layering the, the detailed lemons on top of the solids and then doing the same thing with the strawberries just kind of putting a little bit of glue and I personally like my strawberry seeds to be that really pale yellow and then I pop the lid of my strawberry right on top the wedge was a little bit harder but because I had put my washi tape down I at least didn't lose all of the pieces uh, that go inside and I just kind of transferred them over with my craft pick I just find for little detailed things, especially if you do have um, nail extensions or things like longer nails, uh, it just makes it a lot easier than trying to manipulate those teeny tiny little pieces on your own. Um, and I do love how my watermelon nails work with this card, by the way. If I had a watermelon die cut from Lawn Fawn, it would have made it onto this card as well. So I added a little bit of the Lawn Fawn pearlescent liquid, the Stardust liquid, which I keep in a little tiny mini mister bottle with just some water. I spray that over my whole watercolor cardstock and I trimmed everything down. So I took a piece of that stripy yellow paper from the All the Dots paper pack and I trimmed that to be an A2 size five and a half by four and a quarter and then I trimmed my watercolor panel down to three and three quarters by five so I have a good thick yellow stripey border all the way around and then I'm using scraps off of that yellow stripey cardstock to die cut out the word summer with my Henry's ABCs. I also stamped out Have a Happy um, from one of my other stamp sets, but in the end I didn't end up using it. I just didn't like how having the white kind of banner, it just it didn't fit with the rest of the card in my mind. It's still cute looking at it now, but for some reason I just couldn't wrap my head around it. So I ended up getting rid of it and I die cut some more letters to go underneath. So now I'm just kind of roughly planning out where all of my images are gonna be and I'm gonna start out by gluing down my, uh, my fruit and my leaves flat. And I, this is how I like to build my scenes where I kind of keep things in the general area that they're gonna be and just kind of tuck my lower elements under when I can. And then using liquid glue definitely gives you that couple extra seconds of wiggle room time if you need. Like you can see for this, I'm gonna end up tucking that middle lemon under that slice. 
And because I used the liquid glue, I was able to kind of pry up the edge a little bit so I could tuck him right underneath. Versus if I used like a permanent tape runner, it would have been a little bit harder to pick up. So um, I'm laying my lemon pieces down and my strawberries. And I just kind of went with a very central look for these. I laid everything right down through the middle. Um, the fun thing with this is depending on the sentiment you're creating, you could definitely shift this up or down. If I knew going in that I was going to be using more die cuts, I would have shifted it just the tiniest bit further up so that my sum, my um, smiles die cuts that I end up cutting at the end, you know, had a little more room, but that's okay. And my mice, I popped up on some foam tape, which is going to become important later because that little one that I just placed sitting, he's going to get shifted down when I make a boo-boo in a little bit. So uh, I'm starting, I'm putting all of my mice down with that tape. And you can see now I'm starting to question, is my summer going to go on the bottom? Is it going to go on the top? And then I realize it doesn't really fit on the bottom my little mouse's feet are kind of in the way and everything's kind of overlapping onto that yellow frame which I knew I didn't want. So now I decide that summer looks really nice at the top but that means that my sentiment doesn't really make sense anymore. So I was able to pull up that little mouse in the overalls and shift him up just a little bit more and now I'm using more of those scraps to die cut out smiles and you can see I'm laying it out. And I'm being really careful and making sure that it's really centered and it's great until I start gluing and I uncenter the whole thing. So <laughs> I am going in now to glue in my summer and that one you can see I started with the M so it was really easy to make sure that it was centered, right? It's six letters so you just start in the middle, work your way over and then work your way from the middle to the other side. I find that that just helps me with my spacing. But of course, that's not what I did with smiles. I went right in with my S and just started gluing and I started putting everything more to the left than how I had it laid out originally. So that means that when this is all done, my summer is nice and even and my smiles is just a little bit too far to the left. But that is where that little sitting mouse comes in handy. I just pulled him up and put him a little bit lower and it he balances out that R on the top. And then I think it really helps to kind of hide the fact that it's a little crooked. So I decided I wanted to add some sparkle but not necessarily sequins this time. So I am going in to add some stickles and I just think that this is a really fun way to give a little shine and sparkle and then that gave me the idea to pump up the detail on my sentiment a little more as well and so I am taking some glossy accents and I'm using it to fill in all of my letters for my die cut sentiment. I know that Lawn Fawn also came out with their own version of this and I am dying to try it. It is definitely on my list for the next time I make a Lawn Fawn order. So if that's something that you want to see or you've used and you have uh, like a reaction to it or a review for it, please leave me a comment down below. I would love to know what you think. So I'm just taking my time to fill all that in. And in a second, I'll show a little clip of kind of what that looks like when it's dried and in some natural light. So you can see the little bit of glossy shine that it gives. It's not super crazy, but I just think that it really helps to finish up the card. So that is my completed project. I'll be entering this in for the Lawn Fawn, Lawn Fanatics card challenge, the summertime fun. You should go ahead and check it out too. I'll leave a link in the description box below for you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I super appreciate you being here and all of your support. And I hope that you have an amazing week and as always, happy crafting.